Another article which dealt with um, public works equipment, which is article number DPW purchases article 22. 22. And I'm going to ask the public works director because he was asked to review that and come in with a recommendation to the board as to whether it remains or he wishes to have changes. Come on up, Mark doesn't bite. Good evening. Um, Article 22. I uh, redrafted it last week. Um, it had some holdover language from last year, uh, which we got done. Or it's now been written to uh, include just one three-quarter ton truck. That's the weight of the vehicle with plow. Before it, it said plow and wing. Uh, this is a much. This is a smaller um, truck. Uh, Two 35-pound gross vehicle weight dump trucks. Uh, I also included the, the sand spreader. Um, that is something we normally, when we buy this truck, we did include. It wasn't the package, but I, I spelled it out more clearly here. And one solid waste yard truck. That's probably been the major um, addition to this particular uh, warrant article. The reason for that is the yard horse that we have, we got it for, I don't know, $4,000 about two years ago. It's cost us that in repairs. Um, when we try and hitch on to um, some of our full solid waste trailers and then move them, it's actually uncoupled. And in two instances, we folded the legs up on a fully loaded trailer. And it's cost us $2,000 to get the trailer fixed. My biggest concern with that type of incident is that someone could get injured and it would be a one-time permanent injury. Um, very much uh, cognizant of that because in both instances um, there were staff uh, either attempting to uncouple or couple the trailer to the tractor at the time when it shifted and um, only by the grace of God were they not in injured. Um, so those are the four. The uh, amount it was increased by was the 60,000 even. Um, we went online, did some research, um, conversations with Seabrook Truck in the past. Uh, they regularly get these in, refurbish them, um, so it, hopefully it would be a used one, but a low mileage one, uh, and 60,000 would cover it. And so we looked at what we'd, to come up with the 434 figure, it's based upon 30,000 for the three quarter ton, and what we paid for the two trucks that we got this year under the bid process and that as I say 60,000 for the yard horse what we call the solid waste yard truck and I think it's important on the yard horse to understand the other reason uh, and of much importance is to have the hy hydraulic hoses uh, right now we do not have the capability of being able to move those trailers in and out when they need to be emptied or um, something is you know goes on and you know the gears have to be switched and we've had some issues with them in the past, and we have to wait for the guy that does all the hauling to do them, and he has to stop what he's doing to do it. Uh, we also had the fire uh, up at the transfer station, and you know we weren't able to pull the uh, the ram, for lack of better words, out. Was, so the fire was actually in the trailer with the yard horse that we have. We don't it doesn't have the hydraulic capacity to operate the the ram. So when the fire department got there, uh, we had no way to expose the trash for them to put it out. They literally cut a hole. They were pleased to do it. They cut a hole right in the side of our, our trailer, and um, and then we they filled the trailer with foam. Um, I was concerned that because the foam is slippery and they were on the top of the trailer, that it put them at risk too. Um, the new ones in the future when we do order them will have a fire um, connection to the trailers themselves. But uh, that is one of the reasons why we're looking for uh, a yard horse with full hydraulic capability. Questions from the board? Regina? Um, so, these four, there are four vehicles here that you're purchasing? Right. The first three were the ones that were in the CIP. Okay. From, from prior years forward. Okay. And the fourth one? is the yard horse that we've determined okay. is the safety issue uh, 
in the operation of the transfer station. You have a total figure? 434,000. And the one ton uh, that we're requesting is actually replacing uh, number 18 that has been sidelined unfixable uh, from last year. And so three quarter ton. The three quarter ton, excuse me. It's okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not a wish list? No. The, um, there again, um, CIP put together a number of years ago. Uh, the, the only thing that was not included in the CIP was the, um, the yard horse. It's 60000 um, But as I, I've stated to my staff repeatedly and, and hopefully to others, if there's safety issues that come up within our operation, um, I'll cut and scrimp somewhere else to address a safety issue. So if it comes to safety boots, safety jackets, uh, welding gear this year, um, uh, the lift in the in the bay, the vehicle lift in the bay that only had a 9,000 pound capacity, all these things, I think it's incumbent upon me as the director to address for the safety of the, of the employees that we have. So, and this is one of those things, the yard horse is a safety issue. Thank you. Any questions, Rick? Phil? Negative, sir. So we need a, a motion to accept or reject, I guess. Accept or reject. I'll make a motion that we accept the award article. Make motion to accept the article 22 as written for the amount of 434 for the said vehicles. Is there a second? A second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. The uh, next item, Mr. Chairman, is uh, the fire pumper. And I guess I'll ask the. Do you have, do you have another one? To, they, have, they, they have a couple more. Okay, oh, well, let's, let's finish. Let's well, you get right, well, you're right here. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've got Article 12, which is uh, the amended Lafayette Road sewer, I believe, Fred. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, so Article 12, it was more of a review of the wording. Uh, there was a leftover sentence when it got approved the first time to talk about a companion article. Uh, there is not a companion article at right. this time to it. So the last sentence was removed. Um, so it should end with, uh, you know, it will be necessary to excavate the eastern side of the highway that will require partial reconstruction <coughs> of the roadway and patching and repairs. Period. Period. So that was the change on 12. We just wanted to let you know that the wording. So I made a motion to accept the amended Article 12. I'll make the motion to accept Second. the amended Article 12. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, the other one is the um, Article 11. It's the uh, Church Street Pump Station high pressure. Uh, this article, uh, the amount I believe now uh, is now 4 million. 4.2 million. 4.2 million. Yes. Four million two hundred forty-two thousand, and also four million two hundred thousand. Yeah, just right. <clears throat> four two. Four two four two. Which number? What do you guys? Eleven. Mean? Eleven. Thank Eleven. You. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The number that I had discussed a week ago was just straight four point two million, four million two hundred thousand. And also uh, to uh, emphasize that the impetus for doing this is the uh, the pipe rupture that was encountered uh, in March. And, and as a department, we have no um, issues with the uh, the rewrite or the additional wording, clarification wording that's been proposed by council. I think we ought to all understand that you're going to try to get this out to public bid. Yes, the, the, the track is uh, that later this month uh, the f into the first week of January that the plans will be wrapped up. There would be submitted uh, to Concord, and then in a parallel track, they would also be bid with so, the advertisement that awaiting final approval from DES, CORE, Wetlands Bureau, et cetera. Is that the same for Lafayette Road? No. Lafayette Road, we have not started the design process okay. yet. So you may have, uh, if the bids are successful and they come in, you may have a different figure to look at. So this may be revised again, subject to your approval. And hopefully it's lower. That would, that would be, nice. be the goal. That would be nice. 
So we need a motion to accept the new wording. I'll make a motion to accept the new wording and the price. Price of four point two million. Four point two. Four two point. Four two point two. Four two million. Forty two, isn't it? He's just saying 4.2. You're saying 4. I believe what I presented to the budget yeah. committee in last week's hearing was just straight 4,200,000. Okay. okay. Do you have anything in the contract? Because it was in that right here memo that that. that. The the uh, drill down is 4242000. Four two. Zero, zero, zero. So I've been corrected make? by the. I better have. Why don't I make it that number? Is it, we already have that written in, in the language. Okay. One million two forty-two. Oh, thank you. There you go. And that is the engineer's, uh, the engineer's revised estimate based right. on all our latest findings. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. A second. And I would just like to say that we second. still are under no obligation from DES about doing this. I don't. I think we're overreacting here. Um, we're also looking at some other options to try to recover some of the money, but. To me, this is something that does not have to be done right now, and I'm totally against it. I just to say that, you know, some people don't think we're just going over this very quickly. This has been discussed here in length. It's been discussed in the Budget Committee in length, so everybody has gone over this and over this and over this and over this. And in response to uh, some of the Budget Committee just comments that, you know, one of the things they suggested was having an aerial. Uh, we did get an aerial uh, overlay made. We have 11 by uh, eight, actually, eight and a half by eleven printouts that we'll have available if anybody needs them to show where we're talking about removing it from the marsh and coming down the roadway, uh, those type of things. Okay, so we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Four, one opposed. Very good. Uh, were we going to revisit bicentennial because of the way it currently read? If not ready tonight, that's fine. I just uh, you, uh, you're going to have to come back because you need more figures for us. So you mean you don't want me to just spring them on you now? No. <laughs> no. Sounds good. I will get that over to you, and we can revisit that one. So Chris, why are you you were just talking earlier about you replaced one of the lifts over there, the yes. lifts at the, uh, in the in your mechanics bay. Um, so that'll pick up most of the pickup trucks in the one tons now and, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we went from a 9,000 capacity to a 16,000 capacity. We were picking up 10 and 12,000 pound trucks with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the lower capacity lift. And it was, um, there's a, a huge margin of safety, but it was still a strain and it just was something we could not <coughs> live with. And how about our, our bigger pieces of equipment? Do we have the lift capability for that? Well, yes, yes, we do. In that, to be honest with you, we never lift them totally off the floor. If, for instance, it's a front axle or front brakes, there's uh, hydraulic portable lifts that we put two of those under there, lift the front end up, do that. Then when we go to rear wheels, rear brakes, tires, same thing, we can lift up the rear end. We have multiple of those. We never, we don't really need a bigger lift. We never lifting up the whole trash truck, per se or a dump truck at, a, and at any one time. It's either one end or the other. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you got that, that new one this year. Because that, that is, it yeah. was money that when we realized the deficiency, it was actually a carryover. It was encumbered money from 15 spent in 16. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next one we have is Article... 27, I believe. 27. Yeah, isn't that the fire yeah. truck? Fire, fire engine? Yeah. Yeah. Chief. Hello. Good evening. Chief and Deputy Chief. And Deputy Chief. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Passing around there, Rusty. <coughs> this is fun. The motion you discussed um, earlier. Yeah. Right. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very good. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. We're here to discuss the warrant article for a reserve pump engine, um, engine pumper, I should say. Uh, the intention is to give us a stopgap measure to allow us to continue to have a reserve engine uh, at the beach. Currently, we have four fire engines that are deployed. 
Uh, as you may recall, in November I was here and I discussed the fact that we were finding an issue with the frame on engine two, which is a 2001 Smil pumper. 2002 is when we took ownership. It was manufactured in 2001. Um, through some work, some mechanical work that was being performed, there was a cause to put the truck up on a lift in late August. <coughs> As Mr. Jacobs had just said, it's rare that a truck is actually lifted up, especially a 21-ton uh, vehicle. This truck was lifted up, and in doing so, they, uh, they examined the undercarriage uh, to a degree that hadn't been done before. It's not, like I said, typical to lift this truck up off the ground. Um, in doing so, one of the larger pieces, I actually have it here as a means to demonstrate, a uh, piece of the vehicle, what we later found out to be the part of the frame, fell off, and it hit the, uh, the mechanic which caused him to investigate further. Actually, I'm going to ask you to get that up on it. Um, the, the large part of the frame that fell off caused him to stop looking underneath and on the inside. There you go. Thank you. This is what fell off. So that this is part is, of the frame. Correct. This is metal that comes from the underside, the undercarriage of the frame. Um, this was identified as, a, as a obviously an issue, so he explored a little bit further. And in an area that you can't see, uh, generally speaking, the way we look at our trucks, um, when we examine them for a daily or a weekly checklist, which we have provided, and I'll give you uh, copies if you need. Um, I, I gave a report earlier, you'll see a weekly checklist in there as well. Um, the firefighters will go through and they'll look at general wear of the tires. They're going to look at the oil, they're going to look at the coolant, transmission fluids, make sure that the safety um, part of the vehicle is all working well, wipers and lights and things like that. Um, when it comes to state inspection, it's a similar process. They're looking for all the safety devices on it. Uh, to make sure that they're all performing as necessary. Uh, they check the fluids as well. And when we're sending the truck off for service, typically what we're doing, especially the Smeal trucks, uh, they're not part of, as you know, we've bought Pierce trucks and Smeal trucks, uh, HME Smeal. The Pierce trucks go to Minuteman down in Walpole, Mass. And um, the Smeal trucks tend to go north. We send them up to National Record to have our mechanical work done. When we're sending them out for work, they're going in specifically for the work that we're calling for. Uh, once a year, we do a state inspection, just like everybody's vehicles here, we have to have our state inspection. Um, their checklist is limited, and, and they find out if uh, all the safety devices are working as appropriate. Um, it's not often that we do put it up on a lift. So when this did go up on the lift and gave them the opportunity to look underneath it, they found that there were several areas that caused them great concern. They contacted the deputy, and uh, he went up to, to view the vehicle while it remained on the lift, and he called me, and he says, you need to come and see this. So they had to fashion a uh, device to determine the thickness of the steel that remained on some of the portions of the frame. What they did was they actually used threaded rods and they created a caliper to see what the thickness should have been, which is a 3 8 inch thick steel frame that was um, manufactured during the manufacturing process. It had been reduced down to 3 16 of an inch in some places. It's not visible, uh, it's not in a visible location, when you lift the cab, which is typically how we're going to check all of the, the fluids on the truck, we lift the cab forward. You can't see where this problem lies. Um, some of it is underneath the body, and it's not visible as well because of the location underneath where our pump sits on top of our, uh, the tank sits on top of the, the frame itself. So we began investigating what it would cost to repair it. The costs were exorbitant to repair it. And um, when I was sitting in front of you last year and we were discussing uh, purchasing a new fire engine. We had talked about, you know, extending the life of a fire engine, but generally speaking, front line, we look for 10 years, reserve 10 years. This truck has sat on the front line for 14 years right now, and uh, we were hoping to get an, a full 10 more years out of it now with the new engine 4 and make that go all the way through. Um, the concern came with the cost and the return on investment. If we're looking at six years to complete a 20-year service line for this engine, then in six years, the costs that were, that were summed up to us were between $200,000 and $225,000 to replace the frame. So we investigated several other options. Mr. Walters has given some great guidance on that too. We discussed the fact that replacing the frame wasn't a good return on investment. So he asked, he said, do you think you need an, another a new engine? And I said, well, I think we do. I can't, you know, I don't think that replacing the frame is a good option. So he instructed me to, uh, to get several options with that. So we looked at the outright purchase price for a fire engine, which came back at about, we used the same spec for engine four now, just as a, as a design uh, idea. And that was $679,000, which is a large chunk of change. And in this time, we certainly understand that Hampton is, uh, they're up against it. We can see with all the Warren articles that are presented, this is a very difficult time. Um, so Mr. Walsh had also said, well, you know, there's this other option out there. Why don't you look at a lease purchase? 
So we did that, and I went down with the finance company uh, through the same um, engine purchasing, and with that, the total payments would be the same. It was the truck cost would be the same, but it was going to be divided out over five years. And then in conversations with Mr. Bridal, he actually said, you know, there's, a, there's another alternative that we haven't explored yet. And I said, I'm very willing to hear. And he said, um, purchasing a used fire engine with the option of making that as a stopgap to continue our, our six-year plan uh, for a reserve piece um, and bringing in uh, an engine that would get us through that time period. It wouldn't be frontline and it wouldn't be the intention to be frontline. So the options are out there and we were starting to look at that. Uh, some of the costs that we were looking at would not only be the purchase price but also the inspection fees and what it would take to go and look at this piece. One thing that I asked uh, Mr. Welch and Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Bridal to, to consider is the fact that I don't want to see the fire department take on somebody else's maintenance nightmare. If you're selling a fire truck, generally speaking, you're not doing it because it's in great working order. So I don't want to go buy something that's going to be causing us further problems down the line. So it will require us to make sure that we do due diligence and get the right piece. Um, we are exploring that as an option, and we feel that uh, if, if that's going to be the, the decision of the board, $150,000, which was placed forward in the Warren article, would allow us the opportunity to explore that. Um, this is a tough area. New England's a tough area. Uh, between the, the calcium that we're putting on the roads, the liquid salts that we're putting on the roads right now for treatment in the winter times, and the fact that we work in such a briny environment and tidal, way, you know, tidal pools that are on the, um, on the roads during the high tides, that causes a lot of erosion, uh, especially on, on the materials that are underneath in the undercarriage of the truck. So one of the things that we're exploring is looking at getting a truck that is not from this area, that hasn't been exposed to the same elements, and see if that, uh, that will be a little bit better off for us. There are a lot of reasons for the frame to be going right now, and we've actually discussed those um, with several mechanics. Part of it is that they're using reclaimed steel. They're not using virgin steel anymore. There's a lot of EPA regulations that are on the paints and finishes, which don't allow the, the paint to adhere to the metal as well. So we've already taken a measure in advance on engine four. I did, uh, as the fire chief who bought a fire engine, I didn't want to see a truck go down because of rot. And so engine four, as it was purchased, the new one, uh, w when it arrived in April, we had those frame rails galvanized. And moving forward in the future, that's what I hope to do. Looking forward from here, I think that we need to have a reserve piece. Um, engine four, if it goes down for maintenance, if it goes for pump testing, for whatever reason, if it's out of service, we need to have an engine capable of responding to the to that district if there is a fire call for it, and that's the, the reason behind the reserve piece. Uh, it's also gone out several fires, as you know. Uh, in October, we saw the Purple Urchin fire. Three of our reserve, uh, three of our engines were at that fire, and it was necessary to have them at the time. Uh, one of them was down for maintenance. So, engine three and engine two were part of the first new arrival pieces. Engine four, the brand new one, was having warranty work done at Minuteman. So it wasn't present during that fire, and that could happen any day. So it's, it's up to us to make sure that we're doing due diligence and finding the right piece, but I also would like to tell you that we absolutely need to have that reserve piece because it's there, it's being used quite a bit. So happy to answer any questions. So what is the status of Engine 2 right now? Currently Engine 2, I've taken it out of service. Um, and in the report that I had delivered to Mr. Welch this week, uh, it, it takes a long time and uh, not so much uh, it, People aren't very uh, uh, forthcoming when it comes to making decisions on taking an emergency piece out of, out of rotation. Um, I really wanted to have a mechanic standpoint on this. Uh, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a strength and materials engineer. So we had it evaluated at three separate locations. Um, through that process, some of the guys, as I told you, we, we noticed that there was a 50% loss of material in some areas. Uh, we were having a problem for the last six months or so where going up the highway, it was noticeable that there was a, there was a driving problem, whether it was a shimmy or a shake, it's, it's up to you to determine. But um, in investigating, we've actually had the steering look at for that, right? We've replaced tires on it. Um, so it was, it's not something that you would think about. But when the mechanical work was performed, the problem wasn't necessarily getting better. And then right away, this, was, uh, this came onto our lap. And one of the mechanics who had looked at the piece said, you know, I feel that. We've done the due diligence on what we think could have been the problem. What I think is the problem is that the foundation that the truck sits on, the frame, isn't giving the support necessary, and so that's probably where the problem lies. I feel that this would be a safety issue, and, you know, if something happens, potholes, and we live in New England, potholes, you name it. If something happened and it caused a catastrophic failure of that frame, 
the first of all, the firefighters would be at great risk, and I don't want to do that. Um, anybody closely related, whether somebody standing on a sidewalk or a vehicle that's driving alongside, would be at, in great risk. So uh, the decision was made once we realized that the, the, it's probably a result of the frame. I took it out of service, and I put it um, out of service at the beach station at this time. And so right now you're running with three? That's correct. Two frontline engines and one, one reserve. reserve piece. Did, did the engine, too, uh, pass the inspection? In March, it did. Um, during the, it, we were told in, in August when this all came through, <coughs> um, based on what they now know, they will not pass it going forward without a uh, frame rail um, replacement because their, their job is to identify safety issues, and if they do notice one that's, uh, you know, potential for catastrophic failure, they can't pass the truck. Um, they pointed this out. They said, now that now we know and you know, this truck's not going to get certified going forward. So theoretically, you know, it's got a sticker on it. Oh, great. But if something happens, and now I've had a mechanic actually tell us, and I provided a report to the board, um, I don't feel safe with this truck on the road. Based on the thinning of the materials that we're seeing, it's potentially the cause for the steering difficulties that you've been having. Um, it's not steering. It, it turns left and right. Don't, don't get me wrong. But it shifts lanes. It's a, it's a very difficult truck to control. Um, and that's something that we just don't feel safe with. And if, if even if we ordered a brand new truck in March, sure, eighteen months. We're talking eighteen months. That's true. Yeah, when when we first uh, looked at engine four, they were twelve months out. Um, they have had a significant increase in new vehicles, and we were told eighteen months from the time of, of uh, signing. And that was why I suggested maybe possibly finding something as a stopgap measure. Agreed. Right. Uh, that we could do and then we could work on this have something that would be last a couple more years i mean fortunately i mean i know a little bit about this field i was in it for a little while so and looking forward what we're trying to do is the criteria we're using we're, we need a set point we need to know how much we're willing to spend as a community um i think that uh in in the discussions <coughs> were you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars would be like that would be the limit um with that as a limit, as you might imagine, a brand new fire engine at $679,000, um, an old fire engine, they're going to set the price. Now, we know that engine four, our old engine four went and it didn't go for big bucks, but it went, it, it got sold. It's not being used as a fire engine right now, as far as I know. It might be used as a parade piece, it could be used for anything. We're looking for something that's still going to be a fire engine, so it needs to function. Uh, some of the other criteria that we need, and obviously price point is one of them, we need to have a 750-gallon tank. We need to carry water to the fire. It's important for us to do that. Uh, we need a 1,500-gallon a minute pump. Not everybody does that. I think that some, some pumps are considerably lower, but if we're going to be putting out a fire at the beach with a large building or several floors involved, and we've seen that happen down there, we need to have the pump capability to do that. Um, we need large diameter discharges. Not every pump has that. So we're looking to make sure that we get the proper piece, especially if it, even if it is temporary, we're looking to get the proper piece in here so that we're able to, to still continue to do the job. I know if you, if, if you heard Newington has purchased a, a used piece recently. They did. For, for a stopgap measure, and, and, and they've done it. And so I know it's been, we, we've done that here a number of years ago when we did ladder trucks at the beach to get, get something a little newer or something a little better, something a little taller, stronger. Uh, so it's not not new tech, not new thinking, to uh, to uh, do some of these stopgap measures to take uh, hold us over. So, any questions from the board? Bill? Yeah, um, I'm not going to support this. Um, and, and Rusty, it's a great idea. And I'm just saying that uh, our maintenance. You, you've just been a chief for a couple of years now, yes, sir. Enough, and, and you've taken that over. Um, the maintenance cycle obviously needs a. Uh, uh, a real look under the hood, no pun intended. Uh, mutual aid, we haven't heard any of the uh, um, capabilities of Seabrook, Exeter, Northampton, and then following on what they have for responders that can support us. Um, I think that's integral to the issue. Our CERT team for the police department deploys throughout uh, Rockingham County, up into Stratford County. Their leaders, um, mutual aid is well established in that platform. Uh, so we, we don't have that. And uh, I, I haven't heard any of that addressed tonight, and I don't expect an answer tonight, but uh, our mutual aid is uh, uh, a uh, time-established, uh, honored, time-honored tradition. And uh, I think those capabilities probably exist in bordering towns. Seabrook, um, they can get here quickly. S sometimes they've been the first responders to incidents. 
um, and again the mutual aid uh, a component of, of what this is. Buying a used fire truck uh, to me is, um, is is a good idea, and I appreciate that. But at this time, I think we need to uh, um, re-examine our maintenance procedures, rely on mutual aid. There are myriad, myriad, myriad demands on taxpayer dollar this year, and uh, for a maintenance cycle that's gone south on on that uh, that apparatus, I think requires a sterner look and uh, um, a pushback until uh, the following year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick, I'm not going to be supporting it either. Okay. Thank you. I just. Uh, one thing I, I, I do got to say in, in defense on, on maintenance, you know, this town for many years has asked us to put a wash bay in down to the public works, a, tr a, a v place that will wash these vehicles, uh, get get stuff cleaned out down there, especially these vehicles. They don't, they run in a, such a harsh environment. You know, we don't call them out usually on the best of times. We call them out on the worst of times when the, the we talk about the ocean over overtopping Route 1A. That happens many times, and that's when people call us. You know, and I, I've been in a fire station. You know, you, the reason why you have those backup stations, those engines, is for the simple reason, yes, trip, uh, yes, um, uh, mutual aid works well. We work good with all our area towns. But you can go down, that truck can, you can do your truck check at 6 o'clock at night, Seven o'clock, you can get down, have a run, and that truck won't stop. And it has nothing to do with maintenance; it's just the luck of the draw. And so, if you don't have something else to hop in, then you've got your three or four firefighters at the beach sitting there with no way to get there. And that—that's the problem I see. And that's the problem why you need to have a backup at each end, each station. One time, we had two backups at the beach. We used to run five pumps in this town. Uh, we had three engines at the beach and two uptown. Uh, we've gone to that four, that that four, two and two, and it's uh, and sometimes it's shown a challenge. And uh, yes, mutual aid is good. Yes, they do a lot of stuff, but I don't think that. I mean, yeah, I don't want to be in that point where that beach engine breaks down and say the uptown engine is out, and so now you got everybody on one engine or everybody on the engine and ladder because that's all there is to ride on. So, Regina? Could you summarize engine two is the new one, and then the other two engines? What are the, what are no, the status? Engine of? four is the new one. Engine four is the new yep, one. Yeah, 2016. Sorry. Engine one is a 2010 Pierce. Engine three is a, 20, uh, is a 2002, I believe, manufactured 2003 acceptance for us. And engine two is a 2001 manufactured 2002 acceptance. So the, the way they design it and build it, the, they manufactured it in 2001, but the stamp date comes as 2002. It depends on, on the parts. Uh, so it is actually our oldest piece right now. Um, and the, to, to that end, it has spent 14 years as a frontline piece. And I do appreciate um, Mr. Bean's point about mutual aid. One thing that I would like to point out, though, is that we do a lot of maintenance. <coughs> we really do a lot of maintenance. Um, frequently, the, we do once a year pump testing, which is a significant portion of time. It takes about a week to do a, a full pump test. And the pump is removed from service. It's actually going to Vassalboro, Maine. Uh, additionally, any work that's done, it's not done in town. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Jacobs had mentioned, we don't have a lift capable of doing that. They're, the lift system that they actually use, he said, was a portable hydraulic lift down at DBW. The fire department certainly doesn't have anything that would be allowing us to lift that vehicle. That vehicle's 21 tons. So, uh, 42,000 pounds. Um, we just don't have that capability to do that. Um, mutual aid is a, is a fantastic option, and I don't disagree, but our, our reserve pumper often becomes our frontline pumper, especially while we're doing pump testing or if we're doing other maintenance and that first vehicle is going down, then that backup pumper becomes the frontline pumper. So, that's, I just wanted to make that case. Do you think that we could get an, an engine and use a that fits our needs as the town. The deputies have been working pretty diligently on finding some of these engines. And like I said, we're not looking local. We're, uh, some of these right. are, yeah, are no, pretty far away. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Away. Definitely like Florida or something. With this yeah, yeah. yeah, right. So, southern communities where they don't yeah. have the exposure to the sand and the salt. Um, and there are engines that are available. And, um, you know, again, this is uh, this is one area that I would just caution. And, and I've expressed my, my concern about hiring in somebody else's maintenance issues. But um, finding a, a, an appropriate engine. I think it would be feasible, especially for the 
for the cost that we've we've uh, set forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. From a, from a risk point of view, yes, sir. If you don't have a backup and you have to wait for mutual aid. Uh, well, for, as a first response, then their their response is from their community. Um, for for what it's worth, when it comes to mutual aid, though, we're we're the first response, and mutual aid typically comes on a second alarm. Uh, if we call a second alarm, we're already at the scene. We're already fighting the fire. The second alarm will we know is taking seven to eight minutes, um, sometimes ten, depending on the community they're coming from. Um, we do have some wonderful sister communities that that respond on a dime, but it still is travel time. That's a that's a matter of distance. Um, we have had it where, and Mr. Bridal certainly uh, not incorrect there when he says the, you get on and that first engine's not starting. It's nice to have something else to go in, um, and it's really nice if it's bringing water, because that's what puts out the fires. So, I'm, I, I'm going to support this most likely, as long as you know the deputy doesn't come back and say the engine's in San Diego or something. <laughs> he has to go out there and check. He's on going it. out himself to pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as that doesn't happen. Now, one of the other things I just, and, and Mr. Bean can appreciate this, is, uh, and I just thought of this, our ISO rating. How does that? How, it, it, you know, right now we're we're rated with four three Y. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and the three three Y is uh, actually, if I'm not mistaken, they, this changed ISO changed the way they do their rating. So I believe it was 2012. Maybe it was 2013. Um, and their, in their changes, we actually saw our community uh, get raised uh, and to, a, to a good stature. 3-3-Y three, three is a very high stature when it comes to a scale of 1 to 9, um, and it's a very admirable place to be on that list. Um, when the, the 3 component talks about water supply, engines able to deliver that water, um, obviously the hydrants in the district. The 3-Y portion, the second, the slash 3-Y portion, uh, that discusses the, the further out sections, the rural part of the communities that don't have a water supply. Um, this is a very admirable um, stature. It, it keeps uh, the insurance rates relatively low, so th it definitely does come into part with, uh, with the availability of all of our engines. And I don't know what impact it would have to remove one from service. I, I, I haven't done that research. No, and I hadn't either. I didn't even thought of that until we just did. And for the town manager, um, this the way this is written is uh, it'll be coming with the uh, undesignated fund balance. If you're going to take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, my suggestion is you take up the un undesignated fund balance if town meeting approves that. Um, I, I'm not trying to increase appropriations because I think we already have enough of those to decide on. So uh, if if that's the decision the board makes, I would recommend taking surplus. So that it doesn't, it, there'll be no impact on No that. impact, the tax rate. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, yeah, I have this to say about the ISO rating is uh, we've, we've uh, uh, established that rating and uh, we're doing so with a, a vehicle that was essentially being driven when it should have been deadlined and the maintenance was discovered by a third party. And uh, I have uh, severe uh, uh, reservations about the confidence level in the maintenance of that fleet in, in vehicles that are that critical to uh, mission accomplishment and are that critical to public safety. And uh, hence, I'm not supporting this and I'm not supporting a, a used vehicle from that. And I will say that uh, if we have a rating, that's great. But the rating was based on a false premise. Thank you. Well, and I, I can agree, agree with you, Mr. Bean. You know, we used to have a fire department mechanic a number of years ago. And all he did was work on fire department vehicles. And that allowed us to have that. Uh, this town and its wisdom decided a number of years ago um, to do away with that position and have public works do it. And public works got overwhelmed. They couldn't do it. So that's why we're in the situation we are now. We don't, we, it, it, for a while we had a <clears throat> part-time mechanic that would come in nights weekends whenever he could and do some preventive maintenance uh, but even that back seven eight nine years ago went by the wayside uh, so uh, in defense of these two gentlemen there I mean they're doing the best they can they, neither one of them are mechanics so they have to rely on the people that tell them uh, you know and shame on us as a town that if, if we used to have this uh, you know, position that, that we've done away with it. And so now our apparatus, and, and we've here tell, you know, this apparatus that the fire department has 
uh, is some of our most expensive apparatus in the town. I mean, one of those trucks is probably all the cruises. Uh, if we look back, you know, uh, Public Works. Uh, I, don't, I dare say they have anything that's worth, uh, not that they don't need it, but it's just not there. Uh, these trucks are very expensive. They're very highly technical. Uh, we used to have that, and we don't. So, so to to blame the uh, personnel that are there now for, um, you know, not not doing their due diligence. I think they've done what they've that they've been done in the past and done what they 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 do, and they're relying on outside companies. So, yeah, and I, and I and I, I did not use the word blame. No, nope. I'm I, not I, blaming I, anybody. Yeah, I understand that. And. Uh, um, uh, my support for a part-time mechanic would be much more vigorous than uh, my uh, uh, support for a, a used truck from San Diego. So, uh, <laughs> just wanted to raise that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. What's the old saying? Penny wise and pound foolish. Absolutely. 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 A lot of issues. Is too close to the ocean. A lot of issues. <laughs> so, with that, Mr. Waddell, this is this is the first truck that we've had with a frame failure, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah. in that in that time frame, you know. There's something to be said. Look, at the end of the day, this truck was manufactured before I even became a fireman. You know, that 2001, I wasn't a firefighter yet. Um, here I said before you now, 15 years later, this vehicle has now got a frame issue. I, I get it, you know. And I understand Mr. Bean's point, I didn't stand at all of it. You know, it, it, it's changes in the time. It's this, it's design, it's everything else. It's, a, it's not only the fire service use, that's feeling it. That's right. I, the the company that, that we have maintenance performed by, they, they have several of uh, trucks on a tow fleet that their frames are going. You know, anything in the 2000 range, 2005, and it's it's interesting, I did contact HME Smeal, our dealer, and uh, they said that, well, about 15 years. You're getting about 15 years on the truck. I said, why is that? They said, because it's, it's bad steel. It was, you know, it is what it is. It's reclaimed. They also... <laughs> Which is strange to me. This is a company that sells fire engines. They they put it in writing. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to replace the frame on it. So you know, the, they I think they see the writing on the wall when it comes to that too. And 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 talking to some <coughs> people that have big trucks, the way to go now is to galvanize the frame, and that's what you did on the last one. Yes, floor. sir. I know some of the you know the bigger operators that they're, they're doing that to their trucks now because the steel is so bad. So I just had a question. You yes, said sir. that they don't want to do the work on the trucks. Well, if the the longevity, the average life of the vehicle is whatever, 15 years. You said they never lift it up. They don't usually lift those types of trucks up, right? Not, not often, not on inspections. Not uh, what, Even on tire changes, they're doing it with a hand jack, um, right? And yep. that's, I mean, they, would, they actually that's did the tire changes. That's the only way, though, that you can really see the problem. You need a lift. lift it up. Right. So, yeah, it's, so and I you mean, have to be able to, I was able to walk under this vehicle, and I think that this is the first time that Engine 2 had been on a lift in years. So it's just not a it's not a common practice. It's also a general cost to, to do that. When we're sending a truck out to be inspected, they're doing what they're doing. Um, generally, you know, it costs whatever it costs thirty five dollars, you know, ninety dollars, right. whatever it might be. But their their mechanics are they're they're working for free at that point to, to do the inspection to, as far as the business goes because they have their checklist to go through and that's what they do. Yeah, well, maybe it should become sort of a practice that every four or five years they lift it up. Then. Sure. Look under there and make sure because, like you said, with all the salt and everything in the air around here, it's it's bound to happen. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, so is reclaimed steel Chinese steel or something similar? Uh, well, it's recycled into some fashion. Some of it may be Chinese steel. Some of it may just be uh, melted down old cars. Um, but it's not virgin steel. It's not produced out of ore in in that fashion. So this steel is not is not coming to us from a factory. It's coming to us through whatever means it might be. And it, it may not have been, you know, prime steel to begin with. Um, it's been exposed to whatever it's been exposed to as well. It gets melted down. Uh, all the imperfections are left behind. So in the future, when you or when you um, would be ordering a new truck, would you be making sure that you wouldn't have reclaimed steel? To be honest with you, I don't, know that, that, do that? I don't know that we could do that. Um, but we're taking the measures to stem that off by having the galvanizing frames. Um, when we were looking at having Engine 4 built in the specs, uh, they were talking about their famous paint procedures, and we really have a great procedure. I said, that's fantastic. And I let them go, but then I said, all right, well, this, we're not going to do that. We're going to galvanize these frame rails because we work in a briny environment, and if you ever saw what Brown Avenue looks like after a high tide, we're not going to do that. I want I, in my formal life. I was in steel construction, putting up beams and things like that, and railings, and uh, we galvanized everything. You know, it was just sound practice to do it. So it's, it's not true. cheap. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we do the hundred. Uh, go with the. Uh, so, 
How about if I read the one? Yeah, article? read it and I'll... So, Article 27 as presented. Purchase or use fire engine pumper. Shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize a board of selectmen with the aid and assistance of the fire chief to purchase a used fire engine pumper to temporarily replace fire engine 2 that has been deadlined due to frame failure and to raise and appropriate the sum of $150,000 to fund said purchase with the said sum to come from the unassigned fund balance, the funding containing unexpended, unexpected, unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2016, with, the no, with no amount to be further raised by taxation. Said used pump will be utilized for at least four years until the normal replacement of Engine 2 in accordance with the Long Range Capital Expenditure Program. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32-7-6 and will not lapse until the purpose is completed or March 31st, 2018, which is ever sooner. Majority will vote required. I make that motion. Motion? I'll second it. Second. All those in favor? Three, four. Opposed? Two opposed.